Beowulf, a la Shmuk. Material goods. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet, there's a lot of things, material wealth and stuff, in Beowulf. Uh, Beowulf recovers items from Grendel's mother's lair. Hrothgar rewards him handsomely multiple times. And now we have a big trove of treasure guarded by, what else, a dragon. So, question. Talk to us about the importance of material goods in Beowulf. What are they? How do they function? And how do they get discovered? Are there mines that they're like digging in? And you know, how, how does yeah, all that work? Material stuff has been cropping up, you know, throughout this yep. whole this whole story. We see goblets all over the meat hall. Um, you know, this is the equivalent of, you know, having what do you call it when you have the gold? Grill. There, the grill, there we go. Yeah, Ryan Lochte. <laughs> the equivalent of having grill is having goblets all over your meat hall. Yeah. Um, the men have these, you know, tons of armor all blinged out. The women are wearing tons of jewelry. When Beowulf kills Grendel, Hrothgar, you know, in addition to these gnomes that we talked about, gives him so many things. He gives him horses, he gives him a kingly saddle, he gives him uh, a sword and a shield and like all this stuff. So, so clearly it's important. And again, it reflects the cultural values of the time. We look at this and we're like, oh, they were greedy. Theme of greed in Beowulf. But like, it's not. That's just how things worked back then having these material goods were a sign of your success and your wealth. Now, if you walked into someone's house and they had goblets everywhere, you might, or like in this case, you know, dollar bills like making it rain, you might think, oh, you know, they're greedy. Um, but that's not what we're supposed to think. We're supposed to think, oh, they're successful. Um, it, it's a good thing, it's respected. Why do you think that's the case? You know, when, when I think about this era, I think about resources, like just living, having food reliably and water reliably available and protection from the elements and disease and God knows what else. Um, it was like an achievement, like blowing out your birthday candles like was something that came because life was so hard and that was only a couple hundred years ago that tradition started that you still had breath strong enough to blow out your candles so you celebrated another year of life. In this era, my goodness, it must have been very hard. So I, I get the materiality mattering. And it wasn't dollar bills, it was like goblets for water. Right, and, and the materiality matters. And you, you have to remember that, again, we're not talking about everyday people, we're talking about kings here, right? So um, things like a goblet or a sword or, or you know jewels were a way for a king to say, make an alliance, instead of just kind of like shaking someone's hand and saying like, yes, we're good, gentlemen's agreement. Like, we don't do that today either. We sign contracts. And, um, it, you know, the way that they did it to, to have alliances was to give gifts among each other, give material things, instead of just saying, like, yeah, we're good. Um, and it was important to kind of have that, as, as we brought up earlier, that symbol of, of a connection. But in Beowulf, there's a tension because, uh, you know, again, reflecting the cultural values, material things being good and respected. But when the story was written down, the Christian values had really come into play. And as we know from the Bible, you're not supposed to value worldly things. You're supposed to, you know, value the otherworldly, not the worldly. Um, and so we do see this tension. Um, some of the gnomes that Hrothgar says to uh, Beowulf are about, you know, value eternal life, kind of you can't this you can't take it with you idea. Uh, so we do see the tension. Um, and if you're, you know, if, if you're confused while you're reading Beowulf, you're supposed to be, um, because there is a tension between pagan and Christian values, um, valuing what's worldly and what's material versus completely pushing all that aside uh, to, to value the otherworldly. What are some of the material goods talked about in Beowulf? What's the purpose of the display of wealth and all the glitzy gifts? Why is there a tension between materiality and immateriality in Beowulf? How is this tension shown in reading the story? Yes, we're good. Hey, Shmuppers, we appreciate you checking us out, but we'd appreciate it even more if you'd click the subscribe button below. That way we can let you know whenever there's something new and exciting coming out of Shmup Central. If you're still starved for something else to do, well, wander over to www.shmup.com or see what we're up to on Facebook and Twitter. In the meantime, uh, well, we'll be right here getting our dance on. Puppet Dance Jam. Yeah, go. Woo-hoo.